Hey everybody, happy Friday, happy Friday. Oh my God, I was just watching, I was watching the Tamara Hall show, you guys. And guess who she was in, in, uh, interviewing? Melba Moore. Oh my God, you guys remember Melba Moore? Oh my goodness, if you don't Google her, she is an icon. She is just beautiful. I wanted to be like her, um, you know, uh, she's just so wonderful. I used to idolize Melba Moore and she is still going. She just did a 30th album um, and she's going to do be in a remake of the movie, The Imitation of Life. That is an old, old movie. And that movie is about uh, this woman who um, was born, her mom was black, but when she was born, she, she could pass for white. And if you young people, if you're watching this or you guys don't know about passing back in the day, black people, if you were like really, really white and you could pass, I'm at a train station, so if you hear a noise, I'm gonna stop talking. Sometimes they, sometimes the intercom come on. So the movie was based on uh, this black woman who was a maid who had a daughter that could pass for white, and um, and she this the maid worked for this white actress. She was coming up and she wanted to you know and she became famous and she ended up working. This white woman became famous actress or a successful actress, and she had the black woman as a maid, but the black woman had the daughter who could pass for white. And so she did not want anybody to know that she was black. I seen the movie, the old version, right? But I want to see the one, the remake with Melba Moore. Oh my God, that is going to be phenomenal. And it's so funny because Melba Moore was telling her story that when uh, she was young, she was uh, her stepdad. She was the only child until her mom got married, and then her stepdad had her mom. I mean, her stepdad had two kids, so she was happy to you know have a family and everything. And her stepdad made them learn how to play the piano. Oops, excuse me. I'm like, Whoop. dropping my purse. Ouch, dropping my purse. And her step, the story that she told was just so fascinating. Her stepdad made them learn how to play the piano. Her stepdad was a singer. Her mom was a singer, but her stepdad did not want her to get into the entertainment industry. So she went and got a teaching job. And then after teaching for so long, you know, um, she asked her dad to, can he like, get her in because she really wanted to sing and it was just um so not only did she sing but she was acting too and so her father got her dad got her in she met different people connections and her career just blossomed from there and it was just you know it was an up and down thing i'm sure it wasn't like in anything in life right it wasn't just you know all roses you know Roses and flowers, roses and flowers, right? Or uh, was it a cherry and roses? Whatever the hell is that saying? These are three floor train for San Francisco Airport in two minutes. So I am like so fascinated with her. And she was saying her daughter helped her reinvent herself again. Because, you know, she's, I think Melba Morris is like in her mid 70s or something like that child she looks really good she looks real good and so my thing is that's what life is all about reinventing yourself um it's so funny let me tell you a story one thing i don't like is succumbing to fear right so i'm hearing like Two people, they came to me with, oh, do you hear? You hear they're just laying off people. They're just laying off. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I got something to do. You know, I'll talk to you later because I don't like to have fearful conversations. I like to have conversations of, of abundance, 
you know, of, um, you know, solution oriented, coming together and brainstorming, you know, um, just about growth. How can we do better? How can we have better? How can we be better? Those are the kind of, I love positive conversation that allow for growth, right? I love getting together and collaborating and creating things. I love working on projects, you know, and like there's a project I'm working on, a wealth building project that will help people um, in the church and things of that nature, you know, and um, putting together some good stuff. I don't want to give it away. But the thing is, is that what fear does, it keeps, it doesn't allow you to focus on what you could, the great things that you're capable of, right? So fear keeps, it makes you freeze, right? It paralyzes you. That's why, you know, when somebody starts a conversation with me and it's a fear based. And it's a fear-based conversation, I cut it off. Not in a rude way, but I cut, I, I, like, I end the conversation. I, I, like, I tell them I got something to do, you know, whatever. Because that, that's not a good, I don't, you, you cannot create anything great from that kind of energy. And energy, that's some real stuff, right? They said that stress, that's an energy, a negative energy. If you allow it, if you allow stress in your life, stress, oh, that's my train, guys. I'm like, we're gonna finish the story on the train, okay? So stress, that ter that energy, if you allow it to, will manifest itself in your body as an illness, as a heart attack, as anxiety. This is another energy, right? Um, which will manifest itself as negative mindset or um, even cancer. So these are things that we have to fight against, that we cannot allow to happen. And it's, sometimes it's just such a challenge because a, a, lo a large number of people in this world, they come from a fear-based mentality, a lack mentality, uh, you know, and people that think that way are dangerous to be around. Because if you're around somebody who's fearful, if you're around somebody who is, um, have lack mentality, they will attack you. I mean, they will, they will, they will try their best. If you have anything good going on, they will try their best to sabotage that. Why? Because they cannot see themselves working to that level. They cannot see themselves accomplishing anything. Why? Because fear has, they're frozen in fear. They're coming from a fear-based mentality. So you don't want to be around those people. So if you're a person that have an abundance mentality, a can-do mentality, you love building things of positivity, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Don't talk about it to anybody. And I recommend that you 
find people who are doing great things or who's making it happen, no matter how the economy is, no matter how the environment is, these people don't make excuses. These people don't make excuses. They say, my mind is made up and I'm gonna make it happen. Once you, when you're around people that have their mind made up, they're going to make their dream work or they're going to make something happen. You're around good people because nothing can, nothing can stop a person with that kind of mindset. Nothing. You can't do nothing, say nothing, there's nothing because they're not going to be around you to hear you say anything negative. <laughs> They're going to leave your presence or uh, dismiss you in a minute, okay? So my point here is that I don't care. You know, I, I say that as a Christian, this is me as a Christian. My economy, my money, my wealth, um, my needs are not met by man or the, the community or the environment. My needs are met by God. God meet my needs. He said he will meet all my needs, right? So I believe that. I have a faith, I have faith in that. So that's what I wanted to say. Don't let fear stop you from accomplishing anything just because it seems challenging. That's probably what you need is a challenge, right? And where there's a problem, on the other side of the coin, there is a solution, right? You may not find it right away. It may be a challenge to find. You may have to do some research. But my thing is, don't make excuses and don't give up. On that note, I'm getting off the train. I'm not going to get off the train yet, but I'm getting off this too. Don't forget, you guys, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my video. And I will talk to you guys next time. Have a blessed one. Have a great weekend, you guys. Bye.